everybody, this is John Bain. I want to welcome you to Scrap Mechanic Survival. Hope you guys are doing pretty good today. I'm doing good myself. Don't want to forget to mind you all to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be here when stuff happens, because here we are in the workshop slash in, uh, inventory management slash warehouse slash basement area base. And hopefully you guys have a good one. I really appreciate all the support of the series. Ooh, some more poop. Some more glow. Appreciate them support the series and all the good stuff. I really do. Um, it, it, again, it means a lot to me. So thank you so much. And um, I just want to let you guys know I have several comments on doing stuff like to the base. And I'm not doing a lot of like other things. I want to do the little poop thing for now uh, because I thought it was funny and I wanted to do some fun. But um, I'm, I'm. This is the shell I, again. I say like this is getting the basic floors together. I had to get these guys put in so I could continue to function correctly at the base. But we'll be get, We're gonna go ahead and get the walls and the floors and stuff kind of set up and get the basic like major load of mats out of the way. So then after that we can kind of chillax. Maybe have done another warehouse. Have more parts to mess with to add to our our lovely base. Um. So that's why why you haven't seen a lot of different things like you know like elevator or anything like that going on yet because I, I want to get the stuff together and take my time make sure it's right i don't want to rush it and make it too too you know of a hasty of a build and i, I don't think we've been rushing it i don't want to also don't want to drag my feet either um like episodes like the last episode really do help out a lot too because when i'm not streaming or streaming while recording um i am also i'm one well, and when i'm not streaming too i'm gathering mats and we're processing mats and doing stuff so um, and I had someone ask me why I have three craft bots. Uh, I used to do stuff like this back when I played Vanilla Ark. Is uh, why wait an hour for 5,000 concrete or whatever you're doing when you can have three craft bots going on at the same time and, and only take one third of that time, like 20 minutes. So that's why there's so many craft bots. And it's so I can like multi craft things at the same time. Let's say I want to do one thing here, then I want to do lights here, then I want to do shocks here or something. I can do that and have them all about the same time instead of waiting for the entire process to go through. That's why we have it in. That's why the system here, it's all interconnected. Everything pulls from everything. It's not an issue. I enjoy it. So but I, I just figured I'd share the why and the mentality behind it. But the why and the mentality of today's episode, that's where we're at. Uh, today, as you probably can tell by the uh, the thumbnail that's, again, on the screen. Well, not on the screen. Well, that was whatever that you clicked on, potentially. And thank you for doing so. Um, we're going to go ahead and build a no-gas, our no-gas uh, semi-hauler truck thing. And it's going to be fun. <laughs> um, we're going to take what I've learned. This is why I haven't done anything to this, too. I want to use it in this in bare bones to kind of get some ideas of how it performs. Um, under the circumstances, under the circumstances and situations that we've used it, and it's actually done pretty good. Uh, she has a lot of torque in her, like a lot of torque, um, and that's a really good thing for what we're about to use it for. Because we're going to do the semi that's going to have uh, three axles. Well, the, they're going to be separated, but pretty much a three axle, six wheel, or potentially ten wheel setup. Because I wouldn't mind in doing a semi truck having double wheels on either side, but I don't know how feasible that's going to be with what we've got to get done. Um, type of a situation. Let me put this, 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 this stuff away, too. Go in the hole. Good job. All right. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and eat a crunchy time because crunchy time is the best time, followed by a sleepy time, which is still a good time, too. Anyway, uh, let's see. I've got mats done. Um, like I said, we've been working hard. We got uh, three full stacks of tier three concrete with that. And then we've got two and uh, some change on metal. Um, somebody suggested in the comments, and I forget who. So I apologize to go back to the spaceship. There are two square lights there. They were the nice rectangular ones, which is going to be great for our light setup on the front. So I will grab those, made four more lights. Um, and then also our suspension and bearings on the back. Uh, Murdo97 on Twitter uh, uh, tweeted to me um, their solution to some of the stability problems, and I liked it. I'm going to do something a little bit different, not majorly, but a little bit different, but uh, that's where the idea for me on this is originated from. I'm sure other people have used it. I think someone said this was one of the solutions to solving some of the piston engine problem stuff. I don't know. I'm just going to roll with it, and we're going to check it out and get it going. And speaking of getting going, let's go ahead and grab some of this. Now, with it having so much torque... Uh, we're going to make I mean, this is why I'm using so much weight on this bad boy. This might be a good idea. This might be a bad idea. This is what testing's for. Um, and I, I'm planning to have a fun time with it. And it's going to be an odd width. So we're going to dress this thing up once we get everything worked out the way we want um, and, and see how she works, you know, because there's we've got it, it. You know, I can assume certain things without doing proper testing on my end. I, I, I won't know for sure. Uh, I do have some driver's seats. I did make a third controller and leveled it up all the way, which ate up some of our components. But hey, it could be worse. It could be better. Whatever. I'm not going to complain. We got a driver's seat. We got a passenger seat because it's a semi. So we need at least that. 
Um, and then I'm going to grab these ones. Those are the old ones we had from before. And then I've got these guys here. And uh, what else do we have? Bearings. We need bearings. And there's six wheels already made. We might, might end up making four after we do some testing. Um, let's grab these. Let's grab those. So that should be enough. Let's grab this. Let's grab that. And let's get to work. Now, uh, big boy wheels, I think, are five across. Is that right? Let's find out for sure. Next time. Yeah, that's got to be five across. One, two. Yeah, five across. Actually, that's not a bad spot, but we're going to go back maybe a couple more like that. And then we go one, two. There's like a four space. So one, two, three, four. And then there. If this doesn't work out, then we will do it a different way. So I'm just going to do this with this material at the moment. And then as we get into like like fine tuning the vehicle, we'll probably end up changing it. So this is what we're going to start off with. And this is going to come out some. I'm not sure how far. We're just going to go ahead and try that. And pop this bad boy there and there. And grab you and you and you and you. And we don't need you right now. So we'll put you there. And is that all we need? I think so. All right. So let's do this. Right, I'm going to move you over to here. Actually, I want you on two. Oh, one. Well, let's put you on one. That sounds better. All right. So we're going to put a bearing straight. Bearing straight. Bearing. And then we need to do this right here. Then another bearing. Then we're going to do uh, get another shock, put it right above it, right here, and then we can plug uh, this guy in the hole like that, and then you go here, and then you go here, and then this is what the suspension. Then you think of this, and this is where the props goes out to Murdo, um, is that the suspension actually has no collision in it, so things can travel through it. So if we do this right and it doesn't compress too much. We'll be able to actually use these three bearings to spin this like fork, if you will, and it will spin our wheel for us. And take you and attach you to that. And then these ones are free running, so this suspension is separate from the driving axles pushing the wheel. And that's how we're going to kind of do the stuff. Um, let's go ahead and do this right here, too. And then bring you out. I guess I can get rid of that one then, so it still has free range of stuff. And that means this one can go away too. And I, I want to. I think what we're gonna do is keep two bearings on a controller, then have this one as like an overdrive or a, a boost type of thing if we need it. I don't need this thing to be fast, fast. I need it just to be able to maybe outrun Haybots and and Greenies, and then we can do. Um, the, and, and then I plan to have the back wheel drive do an all wheel drive, and then have uh, or front wheel drive, and then a boosted back wheel drive. <laughs> We'll see how it goes. <laughs> we put all the stops, kind of. Um, and I'm sure as we do play around with this more, we'll come up with more ideas as we go. And I'm excited for that, too. Because that's what the fun is of this game, is just kind of figuring new things out for yourself. Um, if, if, if it's, you know, there's a good chance a lot of stuff has already been figured out before, obviously. But um, it's still exciting. It's still exciting and fun. All right, let's put that there. Let's put you here. Let's go right there and there. And then we're going to go grab a wheel. Let's grab you and put you on this one. And I think we'll be okay with the, with, with the collisions between them. We'll have to check and make sure. But I think that'll be all right. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get the other side done, and I'll be right back. All right, we got the back end on. And now we're going to go ahead and put in our controllers. I think I'm going to just, for the sake of the ease of controlling errors ish we're going to go ahead and put these two back here. Me, yeah, let's just do that for now. I might want to end up changing it. It's really not that hard to fix it up. Um, again, these are max, and we'll go ahead and do that for now so I don't forget when I get through excited about connecting it up. But hopefully, I put these bearings so they're all facing the same way. Okay, that one doesn't actually need to go on there. Great. So then these are already rotating the correct direction. So let's get these ones over here. These ones probably have to flip. Yep. And then put these back here. Put that back there. And then switch these ones around. And what we're going to do is throw a front end on this super quick and have some basic turning just to see how well this is going to manage. I end up upgrading the other pistons, uh, or the pistons I had, not pistons, but uh, suspension I have. They were only, these were only level two, so I only took one component a piece to upgrade them, which isn't that bad at all. It's actually the best deal you're going to get for upgrading. Um, let's go over here. Maybe that might be it. 
All right, there we go. That looks like it's off, but it isn't because of that. Right. Okay, great. Okay, and let's go up. We'll just ask. Uh, yeah, we'll just do a simple one right now. We won't even get into too much craziness at the moment. Actually, that should be a rounded one as well. Just so we don't have that, um, the rubbing happening. And then we need some more bearings already. <laughs> uh, right here. There we go. Okay, good. Now let's get you here. You guys have probably done this a million times already, so I'll try to knock it out real quickly. There we go. And is that too high? It is too high, so it does need to come down one. Okay, good. That's fine. We'll just do this again because you haven't done this enough <laughs> already. Let's do that and that. I just want to make sure we're going to do some light testing on it first just to make sure that the uh, everything's going to run as as at least initially thought, which I don't see why it won't. Uh, oh, it's in my inventory already. Let's grab the other wheels. Let's put them right here. So you go on this one and you go on this one. And then we're going to put you like right here. And then just for the sake of having that one there, we'll put it right next to it like that. At least a row for switches. Very nice. We might end up switching out the center part for um, a different material so it looks a little bit cleaner. But that'll work for now. And then we're going to go and connect you to this and get these guys hooked up here. And that should be what we need to get started. Uh, let's grab that. And let's go ahead and see how she rolls. If she rolls. All right, we've got it set up. It's down here. Um, before I brought it down, I forgot to connect the back axles on the side and weld it. That's a couple things you want to make sure when you're making this, if you're having to make this, is make sure you weld these pieces together. They, that's super important. Um, because that's what drives your, your wheels. Also, if you're building this one, uh, I currently have my suspension set one below max limit on a level two suspension. And this is basically what we're testing right now. The front end is not anywhere near what it needs to be, but we shall see. I only have the regular speed hooked up. We're backing up. It is still turning. Okay. Let's see what Ford does. Could be better, but I'm also, it, whenever you slow down and start, it will pick up where you're going. Be a little jerky. Okay, let's see how we do on this hill. Okay, we're heading up this way. <laughs> Ain't no thing. Okay, great. <laughs> Ain't no thing. All right, so let's try this with the outer rings, too. Also, too, if you have... If you're doing a multi-speed type setup, make sure that when you're testing your single one that you still have all the bearings that will be driving your wheels connected to something so they don't free spin. Because um, then that negates the power of the things in between. So these are all hooked up and I do have the rotations right. So, um, and you are actually connected to it. So let's make sure that we have, we're not bouncing around like a crazy man. There we go. Like that, 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 that. And it likes to act weird at first. We'll stop that. There we go. Connected, loops on, we have more power, and this is like the max speed I want to have available for me, so let's see how we do. And I'm probably going to put this one on the switch in case I want to have like a slow drive. And that's reasonable to me. That works out pretty nice. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to work on a front-end suspension setup with that still powered with at least the regular speed of our forward movement. Um, either, well, maybe we ought to just do a, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what we're going to do. We'll, we'll get up there and do it, but I want to have suspension on it and I want to have control. Also, I'm going to get a couple more wheels made. Well, four to be exact and put them on the back end. And already this thing doesn't look long enough to match the stuff. If you, if you, the, this seat probably could go forward just a little bit. Um, it's going to have to go up some, uh, we still need the front end and then it may, well, maybe I feel like the back end needs to come back at least maybe, uh, maybe a block, if not two. Uh, to get it closer where I want to be. But I'm going to go and get it upstairs and we'll get back to work. One good thing about the lighting we got from the last episode is that it really makes it to where we can build at nighttime as long as it's not bigger than the room that we're working in. So that gives me an idea for warehouse stuff later on. Anyway, give me a little bit. We'll be right back. All right, we're back at the shop and I extended this out by one and moved the seats forward a little bit and then pulled this back for our front end for now. 
Um, again, stuff is subject to change. So again, please, if you're doing this, uh, it is what it is. <laughs> All right, we're gonna put that piece there. Just, just kind of get some type of idea of what we're doing. Um, I have a feeling that this front end is going to jerk around too much when we do this, but uh, we'll, we'll, we're gonna try it for science. It's always for science. And that goes there, right? There we go. And then we this way we can put a turning one here. And instead of going straight to a wheel, we're just gonna add one set of bearings to this. So we have the same amount of drive as these two guys here. I think that's what we're gonna end up going with. And then we can add our wheel on the end. Is that lined up? Oh, it is, nice. Okay, that works out, cool. Uh, <clears throat> it was supposed to be like that the entire time. Plans that have come to fruition are always good. Let's go here. All right, and then this guy comes down again, and we're just doing it again for the sake of doing it again in case you're trying to do this too, and I have to do it too anyway because we need another side of the front end. Put that there, that there. This goes here, here, and here, and then the other front wheel is right there. Good job, John. Good job. There we go. And do I, I saw the other controller on me. We're going to go ahead and stick this right behind the front piece. So in case I need to move the distances, it's the, all the bearings are still done. So don't worry about that. So let's, let's see. We're doing that side first in the back and the passenger side first. And then these guys need to flip. And then we do full power, a loop, full on, full on, full on, and full on. Okay. So that's all in play. Then we just got to get our turning on here. Flip it around, and right now we'll just connect it straight to the seat, just to see how bad it works or doesn't work. Oh, we need to pop these up. I don't even know if they'll handle it or not. We might have to. Oh, that's enough for right now. Yeah, that kind of. Oh, we're on the concrete too. So, <laughs> let me see how many we should. Okay, we still got some components left. I'm gonna upgrade it one, once, and then you get upgraded, and we'll bring you to that. And the same with you up to that and this is still going to be kind of crazy in here there's so much see the uh the is it the block has so much friction on it yeah see the block we're on the the concrete has has decent friction on it so i think that it's it's just gripping so good that makes me think like you know if if we could handle fps it'd be kind of cool to build a road system um if we had nice swoopy curvy turns we could use and then use like real like strong like friction high friction like blocks that aren't too expensive It'd be kind of cool to build like a, a freeway or something, even though there are already roads out there. But I feel like it's a nighttime. It is nighttime. All right, let me get wait until daytime. We'll test this out. Okay, it is morning time, and it seems to be doing okay. Like it, it handles pretty all right. It turns pretty good, but it does get a bit wonky sometimes. That was me stopping. It does have plenty of power, though. I mean, and I did not make the wheels wide enough. See how it did a little bit of wonkiness whenever I, whenever I stop? That flex happens from the bearings. So it's kind of a toss-up on, you know, what we've got. I guess we could try some. Do I have any? I have some of this on me. Let's try this out. Let's put some weight on the back of this. Let's put some junk on the trunk. Let's do this in the middle. There we go. It's not a lot, but at least it's a test. Yeah, see, there's the problem. It's not enough traction on the front for it to catch. And the drive of the back two in the back are just really just muscling through where the front wheels are trying to tell it to go. I don't know if front wheel drive is really going to matter unless we had it on a separate. Do I have any switches on? I don't have any switches on me, do I? Huh. I wonder how that would do with a switch on it. I wonder how this would do on a set of rocks going up it, man. <laughs> Let's see. Go backwards. Let's just see how you do going backwards. Pretty solid. <laughs> All right. Let's see what it does going forward with a, with a front wheel drive on this. It actually got air going up that, and it handled it. Wow. There it goes again. There's the weird, the wonkiness happening. I don't know if I like... I don't like that at all, actually. I don't like that at all. all right, let's see how we do on this rock face. Okay. 
Okay, we can still get some gription on it. Let's go up this way again. Just full speed all the way. <laughs> it kind of hopped up it. Okay, it's a hill hopper. That's that's the name brand from uh, Bain Industries. But we got the hill hopper series. Yeah, the front end is not turning the way I would like it to. And I don't want to. I'm not. I'm this playthrough is as vanilla as I can get. Um, like I'm not. I don't want to use any glitches. As in the uh, suspension glitch to turn, because that that's that's the solution for this. You could actually have the turning in the front along with suspension glitch, and I bet you it would do amazingly, especially if you had it positioned correctly. Okay, so let's try this out. Remove those. <coughs> Wait, let me remove a set of bearings too. Let's remove these ones. So free spin. And see, I want to keep this as close to a semi-truck as possible, so I don't want to have any rear turning. I want it to be all front turning. The only problem with this is when I don't want front-wheel drive on it. Because then, yeah, I wish there was, like, a locking and unlocking mechanism, like, that could be controlled by a switch. Uh, that way we could, like, like engage the, the bearing itself. I know that when you have a level 5 chair... You can you can choose bearing lockings or not. I don't think it's a that function is, can be attached though to a switch. It actually is doing pretty good just hauling it up like that. That front axle is probably screaming too. It's like Aah. yeah, with all that weight on there, it's doing pretty good. Hmm. I guess since it's only two bearings, I mean. We could just detach it from the seat and reattach it. No, then it'd still be locked. I'd have to actually remove the bearings themselves. Mm -mm. I had to think about that. It actually, this is this might be the great towing speed with the front end on it too. So when it pulls the weight, it's pulling it all the way from the front, and then that way it's still getting traction on the front of it, depending on what's behind us, and what we'll to work on that. Then see, I could put that on a switch too, but again, when I don't want to use it, I'm stuck with with it being locked. And that would that would just kill anything. Cause like when we're on a road and we're trying to get down the road, I wouldn't mind the, the back end pulling pushing it. Um, but and I wonder what would happen if we did this with more weight on the front too. I forgot to check that out. Let's re let's move that. There we go. Let's put the front end weights up here, like maybe across the front here, like this. Wonder if that would help keep it in line some too. Yeah, and again, some people have been having problems with their bearing ones, like they're flipping out or disappearing. Uh, into the to the nether reaches. Don't know exactly. I would think it's like a weight thing, or there's something you, that wasn't set up exactly right. I don't know. I'm not gonna feign knowledge on that at all either. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. So if it happens to you, I'm sorry. But uh, I, I have yet to have it happen to me. And then maybe more right here. And then one right here. And then one back here behind it. All right, let's see how that does. Now let's reconnect you and see how we do with the weight down the front. That actually is doing pretty good. Huh. I mean, you know, when you got a big truck too, you got your huge engine in the front end of it. Typically. But here at Bane Industries, we don't need no engines. Okay, what if I connect this one back? Oh, that was still on there. Wow. Okay, let's see how that acts without that on there. Crap. It still did the bouncy thing. And let's go up the hill. There's some wheels that are... Oh, because they're not connected. Durr. I need to connect it. Oh, I'm being an idiot. <laughs> well, this, it's, been, it's been a really long couple weeks. I'm going to let y'all know. 
Seriously? <laughs> you can't tell. There we go. There's the back end. Oh my god, did I not connect you right? I, oh my god, I disconnected. I connected the wrong thing. God dang. Are we good? Everything looks fine. Let's try this. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm just testing the stopping. Let's try the up a hill again. Other than the body catching, it was handling it okay. We should be able to slide down a little bit. There we go, and let's go like that. Yeah, there's enough torque on this thing to go. Okay. Hmm. All right, so we got that. We're going to toy around that for a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and start modifying some of the body and stuff like that to see how we can get it to make it look a little bit better. And then we'll get into maybe some... I don't know if I have time for trailer testing, but we can at least get this thing built all the way and just, just, just see how good it turns out. So you guys, hold on. All right, this is taking a couple hours. Um, if you guys want to know how I did this, I'm sorry. Uh, I figured the fundamentals of how to make the chassis and the engines and all that stuff is there. But uh, you ready for the big reveal? Can we get a three, two, one, and bam? There we go. <laughs> we got our semi truck together. <laughs> um, this is a lot of work trying to get this type of size to look as, as realistic as possible. Um, we got the fuel tanks there. Put some diamond plating around that. Use some of the other pipes there. We got the exhaust. There's that inside of here. If you look, we got the well, the wheel covers. And then here, got little support pieces between there, along with the power box there. Um, inside here, I mean, we got the shocks all painted up. The bearings are all painted up. The wheel rims are all painted up. Um, and then, you know, we have an exhaust switch on both of the separate doors so we can go in and out without a problem. Um, it's in there. I forgot to paint that. Let's paint that now. Uh, let's paint those black. There we go. That looks pretty good. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so this has been a lot of work. Uh, <laughs> and there's some other cool features with, with, that are located within it. Actually, let me close that door right quick. There's a, there's a switch inside, but it's attached to that seat. So let's get inside of here. Let's press the button to close the door. And first off, let's go ahead and get a little bit of driving going on. And it it, 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 it feels like it drives almost, I don't know. I hope I, uh, those you guys, the truckers out there that are watching, uh, hopefully you guys, I did you justice. Uh, <laughs> I did my best. I didn't want to do a flat front one. I wanted to make it look like a, a real semi as best as I could uh, that I'm, I enjoy seeing. And that's what we have. And uh, yeah, there's a little bit of that. But hey, what, well, what can I do a little bit? We have free power. Um, it's made basically out of metal and concrete <laughs> and it's there. Also, if things are in our way, <laughs> so you, with that's taken cover to care of too. And in the back, I did the hitch right above the center of the, um, the, the well, kind of close to where the meeting point is. And then I have a, a, a little pillar thing there with a bearing on top to prep for whenever we get a trailer. So the trailer can go on top of there. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. I end up going with all wheel drive. It seems to do better like this and it's still fast enough to really, you know, get where it needs to go. Again, for having to work with, with no angle blocks, except for those one little ones up of the wheel wells, which don't necessarily look the best. It works pretty good. And if this is going to be a hauler, then holla. Hey, move. Hey, it worked. How's it going to do with you? <laughs> I tried to ward him. I honked. I honked the horn. Now we, yeah, and then the inside. I forgot to show you the inside. If I can move. And now I was moving. Oh, crap. Let's move. You want to come at me, man? I got to close the door. It's not safe. There we go. <laughs> Just hit it with a tire and it's gone. We definitely need to bring a backup tire with me. Um, I was getting it out. No problem. I don't I don't understand what, what's going on now. It decided, now that we're recording, it doesn't want me to get around in here. Okay, cool. And I have a back area in case we want to bring Bob with us. We have a little aquarium set up for Bob. Why are you doing that now? You were doing just fine earlier. Why can't, why can't, there we go. We have a little aquarium set up for Bob. So he's got his ducky in here and there's a the safe for him. And he can sit inside and hang out. We got some light so he doesn't scare the dark. So we have a little Bob thing and here's the wiring. Yes, whatever. So right here we have a switch that goes to Exor gate that goes to another switch that leads to the controller that runs the bearing for the door. So even inside or outside, um, whether the switch is turned on or off, it will still close either side. Same thing with this end. 
so that's there uh what is what is this this is the front end um this middle one is the higher it's you know maxed out that one's there these are the lower end uh, ones i just got enough to where i could it opens you know bearably i don't i spent some money on uh, some money some component <clears throat> excuse me some components on the shocks and just to get it right but it, it's 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 there um i probably need to throw the lights on the switch too um but i think it looks pretty good and it's functional i better get those things i, I need them can i get out now is he gonna let me do it no huh I'll have to work that out though. I don't mind. I don't mind a little bit of a hassle to get in and out, but there we go. Because I can get out the other side, no problem. Typically, I say that now. Um, and so I tried to do it. Like I said, you had the gas tank. The exhaust is actually shouldn't be attached to it. There is an attach point in there where it leads to the inside. Um, but I do like how this thing is strapped in right there. I might throw another one later on. Oh, I missed some paint, didn't I? I did miss some paint. I'm gonna fix that. Actually, I'll probably end up putting another strap right up there too. And then just go up one more. That'll work for me. But that's generally what we got done. Guys, let me know what you think down in the comments down below. This was a lot of work. I'm pretty proud of it, though. I'm really proud of it, actually. I feel like I've lost my throat. So, my, my, my voice some, too. My throat. I lost my throat. Where's it at? Let's go find it. Anyway, that's the time we got for today. Hope you guys are liking what you see. If you're liking what you see, don't forget to slam the like button. It does help me a lot, and I really do appreciate it. And as always, thank you so very much. And you guys have a good night.